Facebook. Hello, Facebook watchers. This is Mark and Tamil Kenny with Think Multifamily. Hope you all are having an awesome night. We are going to be talking with Trevor McGregor, who is a very successful business coach who has a really big history that we cannot wait to share with you. So for those who are joining us live, we would love it if you showed us some love and hit the little like button. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to type your questions in the comments and we will try to get them, um, try to get to them while we're live if we can. And if not, we'll come back later after the show and we'll, we'll answer your questions then. So Trevor, how's your day going? It's outstanding. Great to be on with you too. Yeah, awesome. you too. Thanks for coming and joining us on the Facebook live. So we, talked to you a few minutes before the show and uh, you said you've had a very busy day. <laughs> world trip. Want to talk to us a little bit about your world trip? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. My day started early as a master platinum coach. I'm on with some business owner, some you know real estate investor, some celebrity, some Olympian, somewhere in the world all day, every day. And today I've been on with Australia, I've been on with Germany, one call with the UK and then the rest have been in Canada and the USA. It's been great. Cool. And you're in Canada, so Vancouver, right? Yes, beautiful British Columbia, Canada. It's a gorgeous day out there, and uh, we've got a view overlooking the ocean and the water. It's spectacular. I wish you were. All right, yeah. awesome. So we really wanted to bring Trevor on today to introduce him to y'all because he's going to be our keynote speaker at the upcoming Fire Summit in Dallas in just a few short weeks, and we really want. Um, you to really understand his background and what kind of wealth of knowledge he'll bring and how um, he can really change your life. If you just come to the fire summit and hear what he has to say, but here's a little teaser that he has for you talking about his five simple steps to multifamily syndication success. What is your step number one, Trevor? Well, before I get into step number one, I want to say that I love the work you do. And for people that really want to learn, you know, how to be successful in real estate, you want to find somebody who's already done what it is you're trying to do. That's why I love working with Mark and Tamil because again, they're the real deal. It's not just that they talk the talk, they walk the walk. So the same thing is true with me as a coach, you know, for real estate investors, I don't just talk the talk. I walk the walk. In fact, I've been investing in real estate for 20 years in multifamily syndications, single family, self storage, you know, a whole bunch of different arenas but my favorite is multifamily. So what I've done is really helped a lot of people do a lot of real estate deals. In fact, my clients have reached and surpassed $1 billion worth of assets purchased, which I'm pretty stoked about. That's oh, sweet. Grateful. Yeah. Because it's not just that they're out there buying real estate, it's that there's a ripple effect or a compound effect for you know the people that live in those buildings, the property managers, the general contractors, you know, in the communities at large. So I really want to emphasize that, you know, after doing so many calls with so many investors around the world, I've identified five key things that really, if you do these five things, you're going to be successful as well. So that's what I'm here to share today. Sweet. All right. Let's hear uh, step one. Anxious to hear it. You bet. And as a master platinum coach, I have to kick it off with the most important thing, and that is to take care of any limiting beliefs. I mean, it's our brain, you know, it weighs three pounds that sit between our two ears. And sometimes it can be the thing that prevents us from going out there and crushing it in real estate. I mean, if you think that it's really competitive out there and that's your mindset or that all the good deals are gone yeah. or that, you know, who is going to lend you money to buy an apartment? You're really, really putting yourself behind the eight ball instead of asking empowering questions that are going to then allow you to go out there and make things happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I think we all have limiting beliefs and we need to, we need to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So that's the first thing I've identified. Once we do that, then we've got to go to step two, which is know your outcomes. I mean, for people to really win at this game, you've got to know the end result. That is, what do you want to buy? Where do you want to buy it? Are you doing it actively or passively? You know, are you doing it solo or do you have partners? And so by really knowing what your outcomes are, we can then reverse engineer them and help you build a recipe or roadmap or a blueprint to get there. And that's the second thing yeah. that I find is most important. And I think just as a kind of a piggyback on that a little bit is to put that on, on paper, document it. And it could change over time and it will change over time. Uh, Absolutely, you're spot on. And again, we start with the end in mind and then we've got to be flexible. I always say be like nature, nature is flexible. It's firm in its outcome. That is like the roots of a tree, 
but it's flexible. So when the winds blow, you know, those branches wave a little bit, but it doesn't snap. You keep going until you get through the storm and you get to your ultimate outcome. Yeah, I love it. All right, how about step three? Yeah, step three is we all know we need systems for support. I mean, if you don't have systems for support, that is a team of people, if you don't use technology, if you don't have a team of underwriters or property managers, general contractors, appraisers, brokers, you're really fooling yourself because real estate is a team game. And so I remind all of my clients that they need to find these professional pillars of support that really enable them to go out there and crush it in real estate. Yeah, and I think that um, that can take time as we've experienced uh, around finding the, the technology probably is an easier one that can kind of come and go and things like that and change over time. The people are the, is a bigger, bigger one for sure. And you might weed through a few different people before you, like you use the expression, you know, kiss some frogs before you get the right one. Right. And it's unfortunate, um, but you're going to probably have some people in your organization that probably just don't fit. Um, That's right. And it's important to find out what isn't a good fit as much as it is to find what is a good fit. And ultimately that's what real estate is about. It's continuing to keep moving forward. And we do something called stacking, which is putting good on top of good on top of good, which means when you find a really good team, like a coach, like you and Tamil, now you got to find the right partners. You know, you got to find the right investors. You got to find the right deal flow. So it's a wonderful way to really continue to stack. So you build a skyscraper of good on top of good on top of good, where then you can go out there and rinse and repeat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that it does. And the other one is giving up the control is the other thing people have to get over. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no problem. I'll give I'll give Tamila everything. I, she keeps oh, saying she oh, wants. Oh, you guys heard it, right? Yeah. He just said he'll give me everything. It's fine you with me. It. It's fine with I'm me. Witnesses. It's uh it, it'll work. Provided <laughs> she does it like the way I want it to be done. Of course. That's right. <laughs> Step four, guys, is a really important one, and that is I can tell the quality of somebody's results by where they spend their time. You know, so number four is all about time management. That is, are you doing the right things in the right order for the right reasons? You know, and are you doing the things that you really, really want to do and feel compelled to do? And at the same time, you know, leveraging other people around you to maybe do a little bit of underwriting, do a little bit of asset management. Doesn't mean that you don't learn how to underwrite or how to manage the asset. Yeah. So I always encourage beginners to really get started understanding all of the different pieces of the puzzle and then really optimize and maximize your time to do the high impact, high income things like talking to brokers, right. driving neighborhoods, mm -hmm. looking for deals. Cause that's really, really where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And I, I love that. And, it, and just because you're capable of doing something doesn't mean you should be doing it. That's right. That was something when I had it business, I, everything I possibly could do. I'm, you know, if I could pay someone, 15, 20 dollars an hour. I'm like, I'm gonna do it myself anyways because I'm capable of doing it. That's why I used to sleep three hours a night because I was capable of doing a lot of things. <laughs> That's it. And we all learn that. We all learn that there's burnout on the other side of that. So, you know, it's about finding that balance. And a wise coach once told me that balance doesn't mean 50-50. Maybe for you it's 80-20 or 70-30, but for the committed, there's always a way. Love it. Okay. Yep. About step five. Step five, the final step, you guys know about this one, and it's called take massive action. That is, we can get rid of the limiting beliefs, we can build the roadmap, you know, we can build systems for support, and we can know what we wanna do with our time, but if you're not out there taking action every single day, you're fooling yourself. And it's not just about taking any action, I call it taking intelligent and inspired action. That is, what juices you? What gets you up in the morning fired up to do real estate? You know, who do you wanna do it with? And then of course, don't forget that you've got to measure your progress and be able to course correct along the way. But those are ultimately the five universal steps that allow anybody to get out there and start making real estate the reality. I like that because I think we oftentimes find ourselves being busy about being busy, like doing busy work. And we think that's being productive, but it really isn't. It just really leads to burnout. And where are you aiming? right? If you're not tracking what you're being busy with, it's, it's worth nothing, I think. Yeah, well, that's it. And again, the world is sped up so fast. We've got so much coming at us, whether it's business, real estate, family, you know, travel, all of those sorts of things. So again, to just do it and fly by the seat of your pants is called hopium. I don't want people to hope they find their way into real estate. Yeah, right. 
orchestrated because like I said, there's only two things that you need. One is to have that powerful mindset. That's step number one. And the other one is to, you know, model best practices. That is where you create the outcomes, the systems, know what you're doing with your time and then execute. Does that resonate? It does, it does. for sure. I love it. Yeah. I think everybody's talking about creating systems, right? Because that's really the only way that you can work <clears throat> on your business and not in your business and to be able to scale. Spot on. Spot on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too that the first point about limiting beliefs is, you know, this is something you went through with us is to think about what you as you would say really, 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 really want initially and don't worry at first how it's going to happen. Eventually you're going to figure out how it's going to happen. But initially don't let your limiting beliefs be like, well, I don't think I'm, I don't want to put something on a piece of paper. That's the way I was that I think either I wasn't going to be capable of doing or that I might not achieve and feel, you know, like a failure to myself that I didn't meet my goal. So get, get bold, put down what you really, really, really want and work with someone like Trevor to figure out how to get there. That's it. And I love that you're sharing that because again, most people don't want to set themselves up for failure, yeah. you know, so they limit what they think they can do based on how much they know and how to do it. Right. But why shoot for the moon when you can shoot for the stars? Right. And I know that again, finding a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, somebody that's gone and done that before you, I'm telling you, it can turn decades into days. Yeah. Awesome. We'll talk a little bit about the fire summit. Um, while you're maybe typing questions. Um, the Fire Summit is a two-day apartment investing conference coming up in Dallas on September 7th and 8th at the Westin Galleria. It is an amazing venue. That's where we had our last Fire Summit. We loved it so much. We're doing it there again. We have some awesome speakers. Trevor, like I said, is one of our really cool, awesome speakers coming for you. We also have um, Kristen and Danny, who are Facebook what do you call them? <laughs> viral, a viral couple who are going to be our MCs for the event to keep the energy high and keep you laughing. That's kind of their their motto. Laughter is the best medicine. We're um, gonna have a big focus on this fire summit around raising capital because if we look through the 14 steps we have related to acquiring a you know, multifamily, two steps people tr struggle with the most is analyzing deals, and that's gonna vary depending on who you are and your background and the way you were basically built in, in by God, right? And the other one is raising capital. So we have a lot bigger focus. We have Dan Hanford coming in. We have several people coming in talking about raising capital, how to do it, how to interact with high net worth people. Um, Trevor works uh, his, his coach, Joe Fairless, for seven years, eight years. I don't even know. Yeah, right? we're in our seventh year together. And what he's been able to do is just unbelievable. And it stems from the five things we just talked about. Plus, what I love about the Fire Summit is it's not that this, everyone's gonna come in and learn this, is you get to network with great people. And that's half the fun, is finding other people just like you who are committed to not just being good, but being great or excellent or outstanding in real estate. And a high tide lifts all boats. Yeah, every single event we do, there are multiple partnerships that get established inside that two-day uh, event. Um, and people start doing business together and someone has a skill set you don't have. And it's just literally amazing to see people get together, build those relationships. And it's not always business. It's also, we like to have fun too. We do a cruise, we go on different, you know, things, uh, vacations and things like that and hang out with people in our group. So it can be fun as well and have a family environment, not just all business. So we had a question that just came in for you, Trevor, um, if you want to answer hmm. it. How do you overcome the mindset or fear of raising capital, especially once the clock is ticking and the closing date is just around the corner? Oh, I love that question. I've got a beautiful answer for that question. And, you know, we call it our card flipping analogy. And I'm going to spend an extra minute just to really, really give some real juice to this. That every time you ask an investor, you know, to come into your deal, it's like flipping over a card from a deck of cards. And we know there are 52 cards in a deck of cards. So every time you flip over a card, that's where an investor can say yes or no to a deal. And if you go out there and you start flipping over cards and you get a three, well, that investor's not coming in. Or you flip over a seven, that investor's not coming in. Because the only way you find investors is to flip over an ace. And we know that there are aces in every deck of cards. So it's really you not asking for money, but giving them a unique opportunity to come in and invest in a deal. 
And if that deal is good for them and it's good for you, you're going to flip over an ace and they're going to say yes. And what's great about that is you got to love on all the cards. Maybe you flip over a nine or a seven or a three or a six, and then you flip over a 10 and they were really close to investing, but they just didn't come in for whatever reason. Keep flipping the cards, keep giving people opportunities. And guys, when you get really, really good at this, you don't just get an investor on an ace. You get an investor on an ace and a king and a queen. Oh. And if you guys can get investors on aces, kings, queens, and jacks, you're going to absolutely be able to fund that deal, no problem. Yeah, no, that's great. I would just to kind of comment on that too, is I'm not sure this particular situation, whether they're actually in a you know, a situation like this, but you know, bring other people on to, they have to be part of your general partnership team and they need to do more than just raise capital. I don't give all the legal aspects of that, but if you're really in a bind, bring somebody in, not that thinks they can raise money, but someone that has raised money before and structure it in a way legally. So talk to an SEC attorney how you do that. Um, but that might be, and you might have to give something up, maybe even more than you wanted to, but it's a difference between closing the deal or not and saving your reputation. Because if you don't close a deal with a broker, uh, it's going to, it's going to have an uh, impact on you. That's exactly right. And again, there are people out there. And again, like Mark said earlier, sometimes you got to kiss a few frogs to find the prince or the princess, but again, stay defiantly committed to your capital raising outcomes and you'll get there. Jeff has a question. Where do we find these investors? Jeff, I'm not sure if you're referring to the investors who, are going to be your LPs or your limited partners or passive investors, or if you're referring to people who will be investing with you in the general partnership. But um, Trevor, do you want to kind of- Absolutely. That? Yeah, again, we really talk about two different types of people. There's the people that are going to help you raise capital, and then there's the people that are just going to want to put their money into the deal and earn a preferred return on it. So either one is found through networking. Either one is found through coming to places like the FIRE Summit. There are networking groups, real estate action groups, um, entrepreneurs organization, you know, things like bigger pockets. So really immerse yourself in understanding how it all works. And then you're gonna wanna know a lot of the, you know, it's kind of the lingo to what, it, what is involved. And then ultimately it's just getting out there and getting in front of more people and finding someone that's like-minded, somebody that's got a certain skill set. And at the end of the day, um, there's a ton of people out there that would love to join forces for a mutually beneficial arrangement like buying property and finding investors. Yeah, and I think you bring a good point is that it's a lot more challenging and difficult to do sitting at home. So you're gonna have to like you know, go to meet local meetups if you have them, um, the ones that make sense. Get on a plane and go to events. And you, it's a balance. I understand there are probably events almost every every weekend it seems like going on right now. So you have to balance that, but sitting at home, difficult. You have to get out, meet people. People are going to, they want to know, like, trust you, and they're going to know, like, and trust you a lot quicker if they meet you in person, just reality. Right. And I'll stack on that, that all events are not created equal. That's why you want to come to things like the Fire Summit that's, you know, been operating for years and has really produced some unbelievable success stories. People just like you that were working in W-2 jobs, people that just like you were stressed out because there was so much month at the end of the money. You know, and it doesn't have to be that way, but for things to change, you must change and you've got to take action. I love it, right. yeah. So there's one more <clears throat> question, we'll make this our last question. Um, who puts up the down payment and who pays for the DD or due diligence? Gentlemen? Mark, I'll let you run with yeah. that. I mean, this is so, exactly why they need to come to the FIRE Summit is this yeah. is exactly what we're gonna teach, but you take that one. Yeah, great. So we have, uh, we have a concept and it, used by other people as well, but we call it family syndication. A group is what we have, and each person can play one or multiple roles, depending on what they want to do. So, um, for example, Emily Hauser is on here, and, hey, em. and uh, her husband, Josh uh, Hauser, they've, they're in our group, and they put on, they I think they've done like six deals, maybe seven deals, something like okay. that, and multiple deals, they put earnest money down for somebody else's deal. Now they don't do that because they are nice people, by the way. <laughs> At least Josh is. Emily's iffy well, sometimes, you know, but Mark's a smart butt. If you guys don't know, him. the more <laughs> no, he likes you, the more he yeah. He no, we, we love them both, so um, they come stay with us when they come in town and things like that. So, but they get compensated for that. So they're providing value to somebody. So if you you know having no money, 
uh, isn't isn't great, right? But it's not an excuse not to be successful. We have example after example of people literally that have no money to their name that be able to provide value by bringing in other partners in other areas to fulfill all the needs of the project. Now, if you're going to do that, um, I would just caution people and then not to get in too much of it. If you're going to put earnest money down, make sure it's in writing, make sure you know what you're doing, make sure you have a way out, get an attorney involved. Very critical in my mind. Don't just give someone, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars with the hopes everything's going to go okay because it's not your deal, right? So you don't have, you're not controlling it. So just kind of a, a you know, a little comment on that. But you know, there are people out there. If it's a good deal, there are many people out there that will provide, you know, balance sheet for signing the loan, provide us non recourse, you know, for the most part, right? Uh, provide money for down payments and due diligence and, and things like that. So. You need to provide something of value yourself, whether it's finding the deal, analyzing deals, whatever it might be, but uh, really no excuse. You can find people out there for sure. All right. Well, Emily says I'm, she's my favorite. That's, that's probably a little bit of a stretch there, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Emily, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I think that's all the time we have for today's Facebook Live. We want to thank you for joining Mark and myself, Tamil Kenny with Think Multifamily, and Trevor McGregor, who's going to be at the FIRE Summit that's just around the corner. We're about four weeks away, September 7th and 8th. I put the web address for the FIRE Summit on the screen for you all to see. And if you want to save $200 to the FIRE Summit, you can use the code FRIENDS. The discount code FRIENDS will save you $200 on your summit tickets. We would love to see you all. Thanks for joining. Bye for now. See you guys. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, everyone. Take care.